Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today's a fun day for me. Remember I said this was my year? I'm going out to Ted the Hay. I'm getting a lesson first thing in the morning. So the first job we have to do is to unhook the John Deere sickle bar mower. This is a model 37A, and let me tell you a little bit about this. We picked this up for $500 when we first got our farm, and at some point, something had happened I know that he was maybe having trouble with the sickle bar. He ended up finding one super cheap and we had picked up a new idea sickle bar mower. Coming back from picking up the new idea sickle bar mower, the guy with the John Deere called and said, hey, I still got it. We used it for that season, turned around, sold it, got our money back out of it, and it probably ended up paying for both of them. Sometimes that's the way things go. If you're in the market looking for a sickle bar mower, these John Deere sickle bar mowers are real simple to use, real easy to fix up. He had a broken um, section the other day and it's just real simple, real easy to swap them out. So we'll get into all that in another video on another day, but I just wanted to tell you a little bit about that because we have got right now my father-in-law's hay vine over here and it had trouble in the gearbox. We welded it, we did what we could with the shaft that's in it, and it's one of the shafts with gears on it, and it didn't quite work out. It's obsolete, nobody has it. When it was available, it was almost $500 for the one part for the gearbox. So we got a blank, and we're trying to find a local machine shop to do some machining on it for us because we just don't have a mill to do it ourselves. Maybe that's one of the next things on the list. So it's definitely a little slower doing something with a smaller section like this. It's been really nice to borrow the swather from my father-in-law or to borrow this, but same thing. Parts start to become obsolete. They started switching to a lot of electrical components and we started having trouble with that swather and we just said we're not gonna borrow it anymore because every time we borrow it, it ends up broken down for half the time that it's here. So, we've got this gearbox here off of the side that runs off of the PTO. The whole drive is completely disassembled. He's getting this all ready for me with a good grease job. Did we get rid of those old Fitbit arms? I thought I saw them, but maybe I cleaned them up. I was gonna show a broken one. So make sure, this is something we do every time we go out to the field, is the bolts that hold this on get tightened up every time we go out to the field because they tend to work their way loose and then you end up with everything running through here because it's at such a high RPM that it just shatters. Sometimes they'll snap in half. That's the John Deere part number. They still have them. It's H28286. And they do readily stop these because a lot of people use these for their roadsides and for their ponds. And what this is what I was talking about. He said this one's actually a little nicer. So, you know, people comment about people's shops and stuff. Ours has stuff that's just parked and stored because we don't want it sitting out. The nice thing about these, you can see, we're running this with some Cooper tires. These are the old tires off of my car, I think. No, we found a set of four tires on the side of the road. Oh yeah, that's right. And we put the old tube back in that one when we brought it home and then it sat here. So we'll put a new tube in that four patch it because it's not holding and then uh -huh. we have a, one more tire. So both of these are gonna have the exact same four tires because it was a set of four that somebody sold their car and they were winter tires and didn't need them. They were five dollars a piece. So <laughs> th this looks like a little bit better machine than that one. It's just dusty from sitting in here. Mm -hmm. I think it had less usage, but they work really, really good. You yeah. Can still, the new there's a brand new cutter bar over there in the box from John Deere. I took the cutter bar out. Yeah. Um, Don't want any little faces walking into it. Um, you can completely redo those if you want. Mm -hmm. Section is a dollar. I can't remember um, when we bought that one. That one was done by me. Every single one in the shop, I just pulled them out. 
can. Eventually, what happens is your little Pitman ball goes bad on the end, and you can e you can either put the new Pitman on the end through parts, but it's about the same amount of money as the whole new bar with the Pitman. I'll show you. So, like when we bought our barn, um, when we bought our farm, we found a cutter bar about this length. So they had an older hay mine or swather with a cutter bar on it and it was up in the loft. And it can cost so much money. But to have an have tools and equipment like this, you've got to be able to replace these cutters. Now they're super sharp and it is a dangerous thing to do. But if you're gonna run equipment, you've got to have a shop that is a working shop for running everything. So didn't we break one of those? Wasn't that the deal with getting the second one? So what the deal is, this is how you buy them from John Deere. And I don't know if they called it a 39, but these are a 37, they're a seven foot cut, and then they made a nine foot. The only one available is a nine foot. This is the part number, this is still good. AZ3988H. Um, they're readily available and they're nine foot. So what you do is you what would that be? Three inches? Like if you go eight sections in with your chop saw, you cut right through the eight the end of the eight section, the little triangle. Uh-huh. And make it a seven foot. Okay. So because what happens is you can keep redoing the bars forever, but when this right here wears out. Yeah. You can also buy this part number from them if you want and just keep fixing your old bar. But the problem is... Careful. Oh my God. It's okay. This piece right here mm -hmm. costs within a few dollars of the whole new cutter bar. Right. So when this goes bad, don't buy that because you can just, you get all these sections, this whole deal here. All the rivets end up being basically free if this is bad. If this is good, then if you want to do it in the winter, I've taken every one of them out, put them all back in, riveted them all back. So you and Trey open. can completely redo this sickle bar mower, Everything. pick up some John Deere paint before it gets cold in the fall. And, and the stone guards are so common that they're at the store, the tractor supply. Right. There's one different one on the inside, that's at the store too, so that's no problem. This is what he means by these stone guards. And I've seen some really great yard art where people will make frogs out of them and stuff. It's just really nice. It's nice how you see little cute things like that made out of this old farm equipment. But this is the other side of it, just so you can see. And like this one, the pitman arm on it is even painted green. Um, they're a solid oak. And obviously, if you're going to leave it sitting out in the sun and the rain and the weather, it is going to wear faster. But he said this pitman arm has lasted us for years now where at first we were breaking them um, in the season, probably twice in the season. So she's a little jinky, so somebody hit something with her before we got it. It has a hydraulic cylinder that we pass around from implement to implement. So I was running with this cylinder on my disc when I was disking the other day. So that's gonna need a rebuild. It's got a bad seal on it that's leaking. But this is the pitman arm right here. disconnected before I interrupted him he just about had that ready for me the nice thing about the tether uh, the sides go up for transport and did you see him just undoing that knob that makes it so that can swing in easier for transport or for trailer loading So we bought this new and we've had it for a couple of years now. Um, if you look back to last summer or go into our playlist for farming and livestock, there's a review on this that we did and some video of him using it. So I'm hooked up with the GoPro camera today and I'm going to go out to the field 
and get as much footage as I can for you after I get my little lesson from my tedding. Then it lets this drum turn, so you have to get it all like you're going in the field. Just because those grease are on this come off the end cap of the U-joint. Oh no! So while he's getting a refill for his grease gun, I want to tell you about this. We had decided we needed one of these. We had looked into getting a crimper, anything we could do to get the hay to dry faster because we were just doing the sickle bar cutting and it would take three or four days for the hay to dry. And we were getting it bleached out, losing nutrients, or rain would be coming and we were just kind of doing mediocre cattle and livestock hay and we weren't up there with the horse quality hay. So I think these ran about $3,000, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So what we ended up doing is we called around um, several different dealers. For, we wanted to do quality horse hay so that we could have hay sales from the farm and have a cash crop. So we invested in the tether. It was a good way to go. Um, the next thing that we got, actually I think we ended up getting it before it, we got a hay bind. And of course hay binds, gearboxes, cutter bar troubles, all, all these other things that that hay bind got used uh, partial season. So we were able to pick this up late season for cash at a discount. I know we're getting into the end of haying season. People are already doing second cutting, which is very late for this time of year. So third cutting's coming up. If you're needing a tether, start looking. You might be able to get a cash discount or a late season sale. So for a little added safety, we always keep a heavy bungee strap on these. And I wanted to show you how he's doing this. There's kind of a two-part deal here with this. You don't want to get it in this middle section. Give that a good hook right there. Just to make sure that, that doesn't fall down. You know, we've got kids around. We just try to do everything we can for a little additional safety. Because sometimes those can disengage and tip over. Okay. Up on. Maybe try it out. 
Okay, now just so you know, these, these are called baskets. Ours is a two basket tether. You can get a four basket tether. We're running the old John Deere two cylinder tractors. And this is wider than our sickle bar anyway. There's no need to try to hurry up and do it any faster because it's already really fast and efficient. We're doing this in the morning while it's still uh, moist so that you don't get leaf shatter. If you let it sit here for too long, you're gonna lose all your value of these leaves because they're gonna go flying off as they fling out and then afterwards you come in and rake it and nail it. Okay, now. You can't screw up with a tether. You can go anywhere you want. Huh? Any, Just stay out of fences. You can turn around and go right, right through where you already went with a tether. It doesn't matter. Huh? Okay. So, the only thing you gotta watch, any place that you're starting to plug, and you'll turn around, you'll see a big clump. You gotta clutch it. This has a, this has a slip clutch on it. Bang, 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 bang. Get to a big pile, we'll find a big pile somewhere and I'll, I'll show you how to ease into it. Okay. And then when they're real huge, you might just want to drive through the other way and hit them in. It's just all you're doing is scattering it out and then it's not enough air to get all of it. That's okay. All you're doing. The other thing there is, you can't turn too sharp. The tires can hit that, so you can never turn too sharp. It's easy right here. Drive right down. Okay. So, two, three, four. On this tractor.
So I got to the smaller section right up in here and thought, oh, hey, I need a drink of coffee. And I thought, I'm going to lose this coffee cup. And I went to go sit it down on the little spot by my feet. Really need a cup holder for that thing. We love these Contigo uh, coffee mugs. They've got a snap top so that you don't spill if it tips over. And we can take them everywhere. He originally liked them with a handle because he could hang them on something on the tractor or the truck while he's making deliveries and have a spot to put it where he doesn't have a cup holder. He lost a couple, they get crushed. I was trying to find him some replacements the other day and they're upwards of like, I don't know, 20 bucks a piece now. And they were like eight and $12 a piece when we got them before. So if you're looking for good coffee mugs, those are way to go. And they have different sizes too. So they make them small enough that you can fit them in a Keurig. Uh, we just use standard coffee pot here, but at his work, they have a Keurig and uh, real handy. So I got my coffee all situated and I realized I had my sweater on. I didn't put my phone in my back pocket, which can be dangerous. You could lose it. I put it in my sweater pocket right here. It was gone. Okay, I made like seven or eight passes around the outside of this field before I started to the center. And I grabbed, I went to grab my phone because I was gonna film, gone. I've got one of those husbands that if you don't answer the phone, he's assuming something's wrong and he immediately goes to panic mode. Fortunately, he's home. So I stopped the tractor. I went back to the house. I thought, I don't want to run it over. Oh my goodness. I found it. Obviously because I'm filming. Now, a lot of times during the night, I turn my ringer right off. So that like the low battery doesn't beep and wake anybody up and last night I had it charging in my room instead of in the kitchen oh my goodness I thought I'm gonna walk this whole field I was on my fourth section of the field out of five and I would just stop about I don't know every 25 feet or so I had called my phone 15 times with my husband's phone hoping my ringer is on thank goodness it was because it was so buried there's no way we were going to find it until we either raked hay or bailed the hay and then it would be gone and i remembered i checked the weather yesterday and it said 50 percent chance of rain for today i don't know why we're doing hay i don't think he checked the weather and he checks accuweather and i check weather.com i have their app on my phone because it's pretty fast and I can click in what zip code for whichever field we're working in because we've got land, you know, in different areas and sometimes we'll work with his dad, which is, you know, 45 minutes away. I can't believe I found my phone. I'm so glad I found my phone. All I was finding was grasshoppers and all this huge poofy tedded hay and that was the thing I thought if the front tines would have got it which at that RPM I don't even know what the chances were but it's like eight times six times it could grab it and fling it and shatter it it's not cracked it's not broke and I'll tell you this phone in my last phone I run older phones because I don't care as long as it's connecting me to the internet and that's the thing <laughs> We found we can buy a replacement phone on eBay. Well, I can't go get a phone on eBay because the Suburban is broke and this phone is our internet. So we use it for the Wi-Fi for the whole family. <sighs> Total luck out. Total and complete luck out to have walked that much of that field. So I think I'm going to grab some toast and have a little something in my belly. Because you can see the sun is way higher now. I got to get back out to that field. So he was going to put the charger on it and let it charge up kind of generator issue I don't know oh my son's watering the cows he's like his mom let him overflow swap this hose out yeah it's running he's over there riding his bike looks like I caught it just in time too Ooh. Well, the hay tedding went mostly very well. I 
I'm a little more educated in starting the tractor with the pony motor. It tends to like to stall out on me if I am trying to leave a field in the wrong gear. So I got a little practice at that. So he came out later in the day and got it all in the rows. We had checked the weather, found out it was supposed to rain this afternoon around two. It's been bumped up to one. So he came out this morning and started doing some baling. It's still a little damp from the night dew. So he stopped at, you know, like a hundred bales so that we can get a full stack wagon. If that stack wagon isn't fully loaded, you have to hand unload it. And you know, even 30 is just a pain in the butt because it's been repainted and it's slippery and once you add hay onto it or straw, it gets hard to stand on. So it's just better to have a full load. So he's gonna let this just dry for a little while longer and do alternating loads of bringing me back a load of bales unload it, come back with the baler, do another hundred, just till the kind of morning wetness dries off a bit. You know, you can see with the position of the sun, it's gotta be, I don't know, close to 11 at this point. Maybe it's 10. We started out early this morning thinking that we needed to get a head start on this. So I've been making some space in the barn after my clean out, I had a lot of things kind of sitting in the center taking up space. And if I can get it in there before a rain without waiting for him to put it up in the loft, then we're gonna be several hundred bales ahead of the rain. slightly ahead of him to come out and make sure that all the bales are upright. Uh, some of the bales, if they're down on their side with the strings standing up, it won't pick it up. They've got to be up on their sides or their ends. So I just go through, make sure they're kind of lined up in a row that they're not too, you know, scattering around if they're not going to line up right. Uh, some of it, because it was a little damp, as he was bailing, sometimes it wouldn't kick out the first bale with the second bale coming behind it. They'd get intertwined. So I went through with my knife and made sure none of the bales were tied together because occasionally two bales will kind of come out together because they'll be intertwined with some of the stems kind of the alfalfa that just gets kind of carried over from one bale to the next if it's too damp. So he's going to get this all picked up. I got to go back there. Georgie is ready for a morning nap. So we're going to put him down get ready for this load to get brought back there. He can have 100 bales picked up really fast this way and it's a great single man operation or two two man operation when everything's working well because those stack wagons are fussy. If you ever get one, make sure you have the owner's manual because it's just like with the knots and the tying in a baler. Once you get it all dialed in and fine tuned just right, it's great and it's a huge time saver. So, I gotta get back there. George is starting to fuss again. We'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.